It is summer season, which means the start of vacations, the start of hurricane season, from hour-long road trips to damaging storms. You need to be protected with the right insurance. Christopher Cook with Alliance Insurance Services is joining us to answer your questions all about insurance. And how do you get your question to our expert? Well, you text that question. The number is 336-379-5775. And remember, this is a text only, so please don't call. First and foremost, Christopher, thank you for joining us on this second day of hurricane season. Hey, Tanya. Well, thanks for having me. All right, so we know um, that homeowners policy and insurance is something that we all should have, especially with storm season coming. But something that really usually catches people by surprise is the fact when there are some floodwaters and then it's not covered by insurance. So let's talk about flood policies. Yeah, traditionally a homeowners policy in our state and any state in the, in the U.S. does not cover damage due to flood. Um, so that's specifically excluded. In order to have coverage for flood damage, you have to have a flood policy. Um, and, and something important to remember that we talk about every year is a flood policy goes into effect 30 days after purchase. So I'm not sure what's out in the tropics right now, but if we have a hurricane on June the 21st and we flood here in the Greensboro area, a policy bought today would not cover flood damage. It has to be enforced for 30 days. And so we like to remind folks of that. All right, 30 days from the day that you sign up. So you see that hurricane spinning out in the Gulf and you're like, ooh, I need to get that policy. You can get it, but it's not gonna cover your house for 30 days. Right. Okay, let's talk about our car insurance because that's the other thing. Lots of people are taking all these kinds of car trips. What does North Carolina law require you to have? Yeah, by state law, you have to have liability insurance to uh, operate a tagged vehicle on our public roads. So liability is required and then there are optional coverages that that most people purchase as well. All right, the one that we've got up on the screen right now is collision coverage. So that pays for you collide with something. You're in a wreck while your vehicle's moving and you hit um, whether it's a building or another car or whatever the case may be. Collision insurance pays for damage that occurs while you're in an accident. OK, when you're in an accident now, comprehensive is something totally different. So let's talk about that. And that is something that is not we're not required to have that. Right. Yeah. Uh, only person that requires is required to have it. Most lenders. And so if you're making a car payment, will require you to have it. But comprehensive is damage to your automobile, typically by an act of nature. Uh, that could be flood damage. Uh, that could be hitting an animal uh, tree falling on your um, automobile. Um, actually theft and vandalism are covered under comprehensive as is glass damage. All right, we have a question about uh, cars. This person is saying, I'm switching my plates over from my previous state to North Carolina. Which do I need to do first? Change my insurance policy or change my tags? Actually, there's one more step. It is license, insurance, tags. Uh, you got you to gotta change your driver's license, get insurance, then move your tags over. Because your insurance follows wherever, uh, dri whatever driver's license you have. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. In, in North Carolina, we have to prove that you're a resident of the state to write you a North Carolina automobile policy. So the primary way we, we know that you are a resident of this state is if you have a um, North Carolina driver's license. You, you can do the reverse. You can get insurance, then your license, then your tags. But... Uh, the insurance definitely comes before the tags. Insurance comes before the tags. You have to be insured to drive that car. It doesn't matter whether or not the tag has come in the mail or not. Okay, got it. All right, so this question is about uh, a new home insurance. It says, what is the best insurance to get when buying a new home to cover things like heating or an air unit? Which is interesting because I don't know that it covers that unless something goes wrong. Yeah, that, that's uh, they're looking more for a warranty type product or a, a home warranty product. Um, Interestingly enough, in our state, a lot of homeowners insurance carriers are starting to offer some coverage um, for service lines and um, equipment breakdown, and that's relatively new within the last two or three years. So some insurance carriers in our state can protect um, your appliances and, from mechanical breakdown, but traditionally you wouldn't see that in a policy. You would need a home warranty upon purchase. Okay, and so, but a home warrant, a home warranty, homeowner's insurance, it will cover if like the hot water heater busts and then floods part of the house. Yeah, damage that is sudden and accidental is what we always tell people at Alliance Insurance. If it's sudden and accidental, that is covered by insurance. 
something that is wear and tear or typical mechanical failure like your heat pump going out because it's 18 years old is not covered by insurance. That's just price of ownership. That is the price of ownership. Okay, this person says, do you ever need to get the wife's wedding ring appraised again or do you just go with the original dollar amount? Yeah, I would strongly advise you to get your uh, jewelry appraised at least every 10 years. Um, and certainly if you make the choice to move homeowners insurance companies from one provider to another, um, most insurance companies in our state um, will require an appraisal that is from within the last five years in order to insure your jewelry item. So you're probably going to get more than one appraisal um, from the time you purchase that ring and, and throughout its life cycle. Mm -hmm. And you want to make sure that your homeowner's policy actually covers all the jewels or artwork or guns or whatever that you have. Yeah, there's a $1,500 limit on most jewelry items, uh, on most homeowner's policy for jewelry. There's a cash limit. There's an artwork limit of $10,000. There's a $500 firearm limit. So yes, if you have collectibles or valuables, um, you are, you are underinsured if you haven't added those items to your homeowner's policy. All right, good to know. All right, we're going to continue to take your questions. we got one more segment coming up right after the break.